Hello you fine people, welcome back to episode 7 and check this out, our first map for the game which of course is Teddy Daycare. Now in a few moments I will give you a tour but first of all I want to take you through the whole process that it took to get here which I've got to admit wasn't so easy. It took a lot of hours to get to this point and my screen was pretty much recording the entire time, so I ended up with a lot of footage. And who knows, maybe I even leaked my Roblox password at some point. So go ahead, go watch it frame by frame and study it. Maybe I've missed something out in there. But that's all for now. Go and enjoy this beautiful time lapse I put together. Okay, so this is where we started off. You might notice in the background the bedroom from the previous episode's intro. And all I'm doing here is I'm just messing around with the Teddy model and just trying to get a sense of scale. So I'm moving around the little player uh, baby thing, just trying to think what size I want the hallways and such to be. Once I'm happy with this, I started constructing the actual entrance way. Now you might notice images flashing up occasionally. Uh, that's just me using some reference images from the web. I'm not entirely trying to copy it as such, just giving it a rough idea of what I'm sort of trying to go for. So you see me here messing around with the windows for quite a while. But eventually I come up with something that I'm kind of happy with. Once the windows were out of the way, it was time to fill out that gap with a nice double doorway. Again, scale is super important here, so I kept making sure to keep make good use of the teddy along with other humanoids to make sure everything was the right size. I then added in a rug, very jazzy, and began to add in a rough front desk area. At this point I didn't want to get too bogged down with all the details of everything at once, so I actually just started to add in these basic white blocks and doorways as a way of sketching out a vague sense of where I want everything to go. I should point out this wasn't done completely on the fly, but was actually a recreation of a rather crude paper drawing I'd done earlier. This was absolutely no work of art at all as you can tell, but I think it can really help to try and commit to a general concept before you even start the building process. This doesn't even need to be too accurate as this map certainly was not but it did help give me focus so I could construct the simple outline of the entire building, as you can see here. The important thing when making these multiplayer maps is you want to create multiple points of movement so you can flow through the map without too many dead ends. Ideally, you want one room to at least be able to lead to two other rooms so you never feel too trapped or stuck. Once I had my outline finished, I began trying to improve the routes around the map. I'd load in as my character and see how it felt to play, and then if an area felt too large and unwieldy, I could simply resize or even remove it altogether. This also gave me the chance to add in crawl spaces with vents for the crawling players. We'll probably need to improve how these work later on, but it'll do for now. From here, I could start to breathe some life into the place by adding some bright coloured walls to match our nursery theme. I tried to make use of different colours for different areas so the building didn't feel too copy and paste which can be quite easy to do. You'll notice later on I give each room a unique coloured door, this will come in handy later for our key system. Also, what daycare would be complete without some brightly coloured footprint marking things? Is it just me or does it seem like these kind of places always have something like this? Anyway, I'm not forgetting, uh, time to give this place some branding. Ah, the safe, reassuring picture of a teddy bear. Harmless and cuddly, what could ever go wrong? I then moved on to the office room to give it some snazzy looking wallpaper, before moving on to the store cupboard, giving each its own nicely coloured door as we just said about. And what building would be complete without a toilet? So instead I just copped out and made a bunch of cubicles instead. Saves that effort and saves me the wrath of the Roblox's most feared critic, the Toilet Reviewer. Judging by the design of these awkward looking sinks, it was probably a good job too. Yeah. Once I finished painting most of the rooms, I could start setting to work on the main activity room, which is essentially the focal point of our map, so I wanted it to look half decent. Thankfully, the easy way to make any room look instantly fantastic is just to add in a bunch of names. Job done. Next, I set to work on this spelling map thing, which is apparently the must-have accessory for any nursery. It all seemed to be going beautifully with all the letters perfectly arranged, until I realised I clearly didn't know how many letters there were in the alphabet. 
Oops. So I had to painstakingly go through and readjust each of these until I had enough room for the last two letters. At least nobody will ever know, right? Right? Then it was just a case of whacking up some tables and chairs. Some more toy props. A building block area. And hey, we actually have a decorated room. Nice. Next, I started to work on the play area, which I wanted to have some of those felt jigsaw floor pieces. This actually took a surprising amount of trial and error in order to get all the notches lined up perfectly. Eventually, we had a beautiful checkered floor, and I even threw in some random shapes and props that seemed to sort of fit the theme. Maybe for another map, we could even have a giant soft play area, complete with a ball pit. Although, I think I've probably had enough of map building for now though. Moving on to the office, I decided to fill it with some plants to try and make the poor manager a little bit less depressed. Though I think I'd be pretty depressed if I looked anything like this Arthro dude I'm using for scale. Better give him a cup of coffee to boost his morale while we're at it. You've got this. Then, for something a bit more fun, I made this groovy little crawl tunnel, which uh, goes from the playroom out into the little garden area here. Although I call it a crawl tunnel, it's actually the perfect height for our small characters to just run through normally. I also added this grand old chest into the activity room. It could be a bit like a toy chest. At the moment it's just a prop though, but I made sure to hollow out the inside using unions. This way when we use it later to put in items inside for the player to unlock. And also added a nicely colour coded lock that we'll use later for this purpose. Once this was done, I moved on to the hugely exciting task of adding skirting to all the walls. Although just adding a little part at the bottom might seem really trivial and unimportant, but I find little details like this can really improve the look of a place. It's certainly not the stuff of EBR, but it doesn't take too much effort and I kind of like how it looks. Next time you visit a place, why not see if you can spot something like this that just adds a little bit of detail. Here I added in a little dining area just copying the chairs and tables with some different colours, how very original I know. Of course we need an obligatory wash your hands sign, as relevant now as ever. And it also gave me a chance to rework those awful sinks into something slightly better. Next door in the kitchen I began constructing some cupboards and surfaces. These are a pretty simple design with only a few parts but I actually think they look pretty good and complement each other quite nicely. I guarantee nobody will ever actually care about the construction of this kitchen, but hey, I do. Although maybe when we make the next map, we should probably scale down the level of construction needed. This is maybe getting a bit silly. Now time for Wonder Out into the great outdoors, and here I tried to recreate the iconic little red and yellow push car. Now this was definitely not a job for parts to be quite honest. I'm sure some of you could make something way, way better with a tool like Render, but sometimes you work with the tools you've got. And this is what I ultimately came up with, just using Roblox parts and the Union tool. Definitely a bit of an ugly duckling, but then maybe it kind of fits the Roblox aesthetic. At least that's what I told myself. I made a little sand pit along with some fencing to stop any unruly children wandering off into the deep, dark woods. I'm sure that almost definitely that will never happen at all at any point. Once the last of the exterior was finished, I went about trying to get the interior sorted. I thought maybe we could do something atmospheric with the lighting, but ultimately I thought maybe it'd just be best if we light the whole place up, as wandering around blind probably isn't really much fun. I don't know, what do you guys think? Anyway, there we have it. The finished build. So we're finally finished, this is it, the map. Now you can see we've got our office through in here, you can have a little peek. We're not going to wander in, we're just a baby, we don't know how to open the doors. I just can't remember where the key is to be quite honest. Uh, in here we've got our little cupboard, and of course you'll have seen most of this already in the time lapse. We've got our toilet through here, we're going to have to do something with these vents at some point. Notice the, uh, the toilet's out of order because it doesn't actually have a toilet. Hmm, <laughs> that's certainly one way of describing out of order. In the garden here, I've got to say, I think this little tunnel here is my favorite bit. Wee, through we go into the bright and colorful play area. 
And what I, one of the things I have tried to do with this map is from every point, so from each doorway, I've tried to create at least one or two points of interest. So you'll see even though I'm standing here in this doorway, I can see I can go over here around this corner to that door, or I can see there's another doorway around here. And if I'm standing over here, I can see that door or that door. So I never want the player to be stuck in one place just looking at a boring map with a bunch of walls. So you can see the activity room over here, pretty jazzy. We've got the outdoor area over here. We've got our awful cars, although I kind of like them. Into the woods. Ooh. And the little dining area here, the kitchen. Uh, let's just delete this door, shall we, so we can have a little peek. Oop, I just delete the walls, but oh well. <laughs> Uh, then into the kitchen, here we go. We've got our kitchen, our little bin, our little oven. It's all coming together. So yeah, in the next episode, we're gonna have to start doing a bit more scripting, add a bit of functionality to our game now we've got this jazzy map. Uh, do you think I did a good job with this map then guys? Or was there stuff you'd like to have seen added? Do you think I did a terrible job? Do you think you could have done better? I don't know, let me down, let me down in the comments, let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye!